Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. In a previous Space News, Thunderbolts colleague Bishop Nicholas Sykes began exploring the historical foundations of the Electric Universe theory of today. As Sykes has noted, the experimental research of the electrical pioneers stand in stark contrast to the thought experiments preferred by the father of modern physics, Albert Einstein. Today, Nick explores the ability of the electric universe to add new clarity to the mainly mathematical theories of physics and cosmology. We have noted a fundamental problem with the theory of relativity, that it does not cohere adequately with another foundation theory of modern physics, namely quantum mechanics. It may be good at some stage to think about what quantum mechanics is and how the electric universe paradigm may supply this mainly mathematically oriented theory with a more adequate physical basis than it currently enjoys. But enough of that for now. Einstein's relativity explorations too are mathematical in character. Indeed, it is said that Einstein himself, unlike Sir Isaac Newton, hated to do experiments and ceased attempting to do any from an early age. Critics of Einstein point out that his Gedanken experimenten, thought experiments, cannot substitute for real experiments in the process of building a verifiable theory, but should always lead to them. For example, the whole concept of a four-dimensional space-time continuum, which forms a mathematical basis for relativity theory, is something that a person may conceptualize in thought Yet there is no known person on this planet who actually experiences space and time in such a manner. It appears that without exception, humans see space in three dimensions with the flow of time being sensed in a manner that is entirely different from and independent of the way three-dimensional space is experienced. Perhaps there might be a form of severe mental disturbance that could cause someone to actually see reality in the way relativity proposes, but I'm not aware of any such case. Relativity theory also predicts that the simultaneity of two events occurring at the same time is not absolute, but is relative to the relationship between the frame of reference of the observed events and that of the observer himself. In other words, two things which happen at the same time in one frame of reference may not happen at the same time in another. Common sense, of course, finds this outrageous. Relativity theory is upheld by a captivated public, but could this be in the same way as the fabled naked emperor's clothing was heralded as magnificent by his fawning admirers? In any case, I will continue to be one of the growing number of those small boys who are horrid enough to say what they see. There is much more to be considered on this, but it must wait. We will move on to those who, like Michael Faraday, progressed physics through their experiments. Christian Birkeland, 1867 to 1917, was one such scientist, perhaps best known for his Terella, which is a laboratory model of the Earth, experiments. His Terella, simulating the Earth, was made from naturally magnetized lodestone, and having suspended it in an evacuated box, he subjected it to electric fields and currents. He organized several expeditions to Norway's high-latitude regions, where he established a network of observatories under the auroral regions, i.e. the regions where the aurora borealis, or northern lights, took place, to collect magnetic field data. The results of the Norwegian polar expedition, conducted from 1899 to 1900, contained the first determination of the global pattern of electric currents in the polar region from ground magnetic field measurements. Birkland also developed vacuum chambers to study the influence of magnets on cathode rays, i.e. electrons. Birkland noticed that an electron beam directed toward a magnetized terella was guided toward the magnetic poles and produced rings of light around the poles and he concluded that the aurora could be produced in a similar way. 
he developed a theory in which energetic electrons were ejected from sunspots on the, lo- on the solar surface, directed to the Earth, and guided to the Earth's polar regions by the geomagnetic field where they produced the visible aurora. In 1916, Birkland was probably the first person successfully to predict that the solar wind behaves as do all charged particles in an electric field. From a physical point of view, it is most probable that solar rays are neither exclusively negative nor positive rays, but of both kinds, he said. In other words, the solar wind, as we call it, consists of both negative electrons and positive ions. Birkland suggested that polar electric currents, today referred to as auroral electrojets, were connected to a system of currents that flowed along geomagnetic field lines into and away from the polar region. He provided a diagram of field-aligned currents in his book The Norwegian Aurora Polaris Expedition, 1902-1903. Birkland's vision of field-aligned currents became the source of a controversy that continued for a quarter of a century. Hans Alfvén, following Birkland's lead, believed the auroras to be powered by charged particles from the sun, but Sidney Chapman, categorically denying any role of electric currents across interplanetary space, developed what was considered to be a mathematically elegant hypothesis that the auroras were generated entirely in the Earth's magnetosphere by a buffeting of the solar wind. The proof of Birkland's field-aligned currents, however, eventually came from observations made above the ionosphere with satellites. A magnetometer on board a US Navy navigation satellite launched in 1963 observed magnetic disturbances on nearly every pass over the high latitude regions of the Earth. It was soon realized that they were due to field aligned or Birkland currents. In 1913, Birkland may have been the first to predict that plasma was ubiquitous in space. He wrote, it seems to be a natural consequence of our points of view to assume that the whole of space is filled with electrons and flying electric ions of all kinds. We have assumed that each stellar system in evolutions throws off electric corpuscles into space. It does not seem unreasonable, therefore, to think that the greater part of the material masses in the universe is found not in the solar systems or nebulae, but in supposedly empty space. Amazingly, Birkland's insights on the electrical composition of space, just like John Herschel's insights that he had proposed to Michael Faraday, in spite of Birkland's posthumous vindication by the experimental confirmation of Birkland's currents, remained sidelined by the great bulk of mainstream physics today, which speaks instead of such ideas as magnetic reconnection with extraordinary confidence and authority. But about this, we shall speak some more another time. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.